The migrant crisis in New York City now sparking a massive rift between the state's most powerful Democrats, each accusing the other of fumbling the response. This after southern state governors sent tens of thousands of migrants from their states to big Democrat-run cities. Now, as we look at these images out of New York City, you can argue that busing these sort of uh, folks was a political stunt, that it's heartless to treat human beings as political pawns, and there's truth to that. But it's also true that these southern state governors have forced big cities to deal with what is a national immigration crisis. They've brought it home to many who live far away from the borders. In New York City, various neighborhoods now dealing with an overflow of migrants. My, my son has played in a soccer league on Randall's Island for the last four years. But New York City Mayor Eric Adams announced on Monday those fields will now be used to shelter 2,000 migrants. And it will come at a cost of $20 million per month. Since 2022, 100,000 migrants have arrived in New York City, 60,000 currently housed in close to 200 shelters. Currently, the city says it spends close to $10 million a day to provide care for them. Mayor Adams says over the next three years, the city is on course to spend $12 billion without state and federal aid. The issue came to a head yesterday when Mayor Adams ripped the Biden administration for not expediting work visas for migrants. There's no reason the national government is not staying true to the basic principle of the American experience to allow you the right to work. It is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And then today... New York Governor Kathy Hochul, also a Democrat, ripped fellow Democrat Adams for mismanagement of the crisis, saying in a scathing letter, quote, the city has not made timely requests for regulatory changes, has not always promptly shared necessary information with the state, has not implemented programs in a timely manner, has not consulted the state before taking certain actions. Lawmakers in several blue cities and states now finally sounding the alarm over the surge in migrants. Massachusetts declaring a state of emergency Last week, Chicago begging for more federal aid, saying the city's resources are stretched to a breaking point. In Denver, the city putting a two-week limit on shelter stays. So financial headaches for big city Democratic mayors, Democrats attacking Democrats over who's responsible and how to deal with it. But it seems the broader point being made by folks like Texas Governor Abbott and Florida Governor DeSantis is one that is maybe finally being heard and felt by big city liberals as well any one sector in the state of Texas, we have more than 5,000 people come across that sector every single day. And so, listen, we're full in the state of Texas. Our communities are overrun. And I started busing people to Washington, D.C., when local officials could not handle the number of people that had come across our border. We are not a sanctuary state, and it's better to be able to go to a sanctuary jurisdiction. And yes, we will help facilitate that transport for you to be able to go to greener pastures. Now, look, obviously he's not being completely straightforward there. He's being sarcastic. But look, making it personal can be a very effective strategy in raising awareness of the issue. Joining us now is Raymond Lopez. He's the alderman of the 15th Ward in Chicago. Very unhappy with how Democratic leadership has been handling the crisis. Thanks very much for coming on the program. Uh, before I ask you about how they're handling it, what do you make of my theory that sort of all news is local, right? And it seems that these Southern governors have significantly raised awareness of this issue in places like Chicago that might have otherwise ignored it. Well, I think, Dan, without question, having migrants and asylum seekers shipped to cities like mine, like Chicago, New York, L.A., and others, definitely has raised the national attention given to the crisis happening at our border, where you've had literally tens of thousands of individuals cross every single day. And while in theory it sounds nice to say you're a welcoming or sanctuary city, it's all fun and games until the crisis appears at your doorstep, as we've seen. And even in my city of Chicago, we have, as of today, 13,000 individuals who are here with pending asylum cases before the federal government with no resources, no support, and are being paid, are being housed at the, with the hospitality of the taxpayers of the city of Chicago. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.